Ah, the perfect day. Blue skies and green lights all the way. Although Mary's cruise control has been giving her trouble, she's near the end of her run. And the paycheck and her new boyfriend are waiting for her after four days on the road. As long as she pays attention to the speed limit, she can get by without using cruise control. And she'll be home free in less than 24 hours. No, not now! Come on! But sometimes things just don't work out the way they're supposed to. Mary had other plans for this day, but she's about to learn that a Caterpillar technician can fix just about any problem as long as he follows the troubleshooting manual and schematics. Hi, um, listen, I'm having trouble with my rig. What's the problem? Well, one minute it's fine, and then it starts acting like it's not getting enough fuel or something, and, um, well, then it would start to pick up speed again. Are you getting a warning light? Yes, the, uh, yellow light came on. Anything else? Mm, the, uh, cruise control quit on me, like, uh, the day before yesterday. Do you think that has anything to do with it? Well, it's hard to say, but we'll check it out for you. Listen, I've got to be in Seattle tomorrow with my load. You know, and I've got a date, you know what I mean? I mean, I need to get this fixed, like ASAP. We'll get it ready for you as quickly as we possibly can. Hi, it's me. My truck broke down. No, I don't know what's wrong with it. Well, I miss you too. Unfortunately, I'm stuck here until they can figure out what to do. Um, I think the sign says Boring, Oregon. Yeah, they really did name a town Boring. Okay, okay, I will. I'll get there as soon as I can, okay? Okay, bye. An electronically controlled engine offers many features. So when a problem occurs, how do you know where to begin? You may have seen this particular problem before, so you might be able to guess what it is. However, while good troubleshooting includes the use of old-fashioned common sense, it doesn't involve guesswork. Hey, Ray. Finished? Yeah, I just got through with the water pump problem. What's next? Well, this gal just uh, barely made it in here with her freight liner. Uh, she said she was getting a check engine light, and the engine was cutting out on her. Well, why don't you show me the RO, and I'll get right on it. Okay. I'll let you know when I'm done. Okay, great. Talking to the driver is the first step in the diagnostic process, as outlined in the Caterpillar Electronic Troubleshooting Manual. Normally, it's the job of the service rider to collect all the information and include it on the repair order. So, working off a repair order, Ray tries to answer the other gather information questions. What are the symptoms? Under what conditions does the problem occur? And when did the symptoms begin? Has this happened before with this vehicle? and what happened this time, and in what order. Every good technician knows that getting the answers to these questions is the best way to start troubleshooting a problem. The next order of business is verifying the operational problem. In this program, we're going to learn how to troubleshoot the Freightliner side of the system, so we're not going to cover programming or other aspects of system operation. If incorrect programming was suspected, the technician would verify that the overall system operation and the programmable parameters are what they should be. After verifying that the problem the driver described still exists, Ray is going to see if the problem generates a flash code. Most Freightliners feature a vigil light bar, and when the ignition key is turned on, active fault codes will flash on the light bar until the engine is started. One, two, three, one, two, hmm, 32. There's no doubt about it there is a problem. It's time to tackle the task of figuring out the probable causes of the symptoms. By narrowing the list of causes and then testing the right subsystems, it's only a matter of time before Ray will find the cause of the problem. 
It's important for the technician to use the troubleshooting manual for the engine that he's trying to diagnose. In this case, Mary's truck has a 3406C electronic engine. So Ray will use manual SENR5503. Always verify that the serial number on the manual matches the serial number on the engine. In this case, 4CK. The manual's table of contents, troubleshooting with the diagnostic code section, indicates that a flash code of 32, as Ray saw on Mary's truck, is a throttle position sensor fault. Procedure number 502. The table of contents, electronic subsystem functional tests, guides the technician to the page for procedure 502, where a brief throttle position sensor system operation and system diagram are located. That information is followed by a generic electrical schematic of the throttle position sensor subsystem, which might lead the technician to think, well, I should be able to trace the circuit with a schematic in the manual. But that's not the case. Caterpillar electronic engines are offered in a lot of trucks, and every manufacturer has their own way of doing things. Components are located in different places, wires marked and routed differently, and so on. The generic throttle position sensor schematic in the manual illustrates the system like this. On the engine side of the system, the electronic control module is wired from a 40-pin J4-P4 connector to brown and black wires that terminate in a 40-pin P7-J7 connector. From there, the illustration shows two unmarked wires on the OEM, in this case Freightliner, side of the system, terminating in a 3-pin P11-J11 connector. On the J11, or OEM side of the connector, a power circuit is illustrated as an unmarked wire going to the battery positive. And on the P11, or back on the engine side of the system once again, three wires, one white, one black, and one red, are shown terminating in the throttle position sensor itself. So, why isn't this enough information to start troubleshooting without referring to the Freightliner wiring schematic? What? Where the devil are the color-coded wires? The best way to troubleshoot the problem, the technician needs to use the Freightliner wiring diagram. Take a closer look and you'll see why quickly enough. Now well, let's see. Here's the throttle position sensor, which the Freightliner wiring diagram tells me is pedal mounted, not a remote mounted sensor. Here are the three wires coming off the engine side of the system onto, well, sure enough, non-color coded wires. C790, C702, and uh, C121 on the Freightliner side. And if I remember right, the C stands for Caterpillar. By looking at the Freightliner schematic, Ray has saved time that would be wasted looking for a remote mounted sensor. And he's learned something important about a Freightliner. There's no troubleshooting significance to whether a wire is white or yellow, because Freightliner uses a numbering system not a color coding system for its wires. The C that comes before each number indicates that this is Freightliner's wiring specifically for a Caterpillar electronic engine. From there, it's simple enough to trace each wire through the schematic. C790 routes through a six pin connector to a splice for the ground side of the circuit through the 23-pin Deutsch connector installed by Freightliner on the bulkhead. On the generic schematic in the Caterpillar manual, this 23-pin connector isn't shown. Following that C790 Freightliner wire, we see that it terminates on the Freightliner side of the 40-pin engine-mounted P7-J7 connector. To trace the circuit all the way to the ground, Ray would return to the Caterpillar generic schematic which shows a black wire running from the P7-J7 connector to the engine ground. Now let's follow the signal circuit, C702, on the Freightliner diagram. It travels directly through the 23-pin connector to the 40-pin P7-J7 connector and onto the J4-P4 connector on the engine, which is not shown on the Freightliner diagram. This wire carries a signal from the sensor to the ECM. C121, the power wire, 
travels through a common power splice, then to the power relay, onto the power circuit breaker. The Caterpillar generic diagram shows only a red wire traveling to the vehicle's batteries. You can see that the Freightliner schematic isn't difficult to read, and that by using it, you learn the exact route each circuit's numbered wires take. Sort of like using a road map to find your way around a city that you've never been to before. Mary's truck is new, and the wiring diagram isn't yet in the Freightliner service manual. In this case, the service manager had to contact a Freightliner service representative to get the correct wiring diagram for a 3406C electronic engine in a Freightliner 120 conventional chassis. Just as a technician needs the correct Caterpillar publication, he also requires the right Freightliner diagram. Ray would now follow the step-by-step -step functional tests outlined on the Caterpillar troubleshooting manual. Because he knows the wire numbers, Ray can trace each wire and perform a 10-pound pull test on each pin and wire. If he doesn't find a loose or disconnected wire, he checks for proper adjustment of the throttle position sensor. That leads Ray to the instructions in the manual for tracking down a potential sensor supply voltage problem using a digital multimeter. He discovers that Mary's throttle isn't getting power. Here again, the value of knowing how to read the Freightliner schematic becomes clear. By knowing the exact route of the circuit, the technician can quickly look for and isolate a possible power supply problem, one part of the circuit at a time. In this case, he discovers that the wire splice was incorrectly made, intermittently opening the pedal's power supply. If that had not proved to be the source of the trouble, the troubleshooting manual outlines additional step-by-step -step tests. Now, this stuff isn't rocket science, but it sure could get complicated if I didn't use the detailed Freightliner schematic, and if I didn't combine it with the instructions in the manual. Hey, you are uh, fixing my truck or are you taking a break? Oh, hi. No, I found the problem. Just a loose connection. You're all set, ready to go. But uh, I noticed on your repair order that uh, you're having problems with your cruise control. Oh, yeah, but I'm not going to need it on this last stretch. I've got to get rolling. Well, let me just ask you a couple of questions. Maybe I can fix it. I mean, it sure would make the last leg of your run a lot easier. Well, okay, um, the cruise just started cutting out on me a couple of days ago, so I just stopped using it. Notice anything different? Bad roads, bad weather, anything like that? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, it would, it would cut out on uh, rough roads. Well, look, uh... Give me one hour, just to give it a try. Okay, you, you've, you've got an hour. <sighs> hey, I don't have to do anything. Listen, I make my living from this truck, dude. Do you understand? Well, then maybe you need to find something else to do this weekend, okay? You get my drift? Well, it looks like Ray is off to a good start this time, even if Mary is having some extra problems. Like we learned earlier, it's always best to talk to the driver about the situation if possible. From there, the diagnostic process continues as usual. Ray begins by checking for a fault code, this time getting a 55, which tells him that there is no active fault code in the system. Without a fault code, he follows the diagnostic procedures outlined in the Caterpillar Electronic Troubleshooting Manual. He refers to the table of contents, which contains a troubleshooting without a diagnostic code section. Probable root causes are then eliminated one by one through a series of step-by-step -step tests. For example, we'll assume that Ray has performed the first two series of tests without locating the root cause of the problem. He's left with number three on the list. P504, vehicle speed signal. Let's take a closer look. The table of contents reveals the location of procedure 504 in the manual. And just as with the throttle position sensor system, the vehicle speed signal section begins with a brief system operation description and a very general illustration of the system's components. Followed by, in this case, a series of schematics. 
Freightliners are built with a vehicle speed circuit using a dual winding vehicle speed sensor. This subsystem is covered by schematic number three. And just as with our first example, the schematic in the manual is generic, offering limited troubleshooting information. For example, the dual winding vehicle speed sensor is illustrated in the manual as being connected directly to the speedometer by two unmarked wires. Close examination of the Freightliner schematic reveals that two black wires route from the sensor to a two-pin connector. From there, two Freightliner numbered wires connect the sensor with the speedometer. The Caterpillar Manual generic schematic also illustrates a black and white wire running from the sensor directly to the vehicle speed buffer. The Freightliner schematic shows two black wires going from the sensor to a two-pin connector. From the connector, one black wire changes to white, the other remains black, and they both terminate at the vehicle speed buffer. There are other differences between the generic and the Freightliner wiring diagram. For example, the generic version shows three wires, black, orange, and red, routing from the vehicle speed buffer to a P14J14 connector, with three unmarked wires continuing from that connector through the Freightliner side of the system. But look at the Freightliner diagram. It reveals that five wires route from the vehicle speed buffer, red, black, green, orange, and brown, to a five pin P14J14 connector. On the Freightliner side of the connector, three wires marked by numbers carry the circuit through the OEM side. C790 is once again a ground circuit. The wire traveling through the Freightliner 23-pin connector to the ground splice and back through the 40-pin P7J7 connector. C704 routes the signal through the P7J7 connector between the buffer and the ECM. And C121, like the throttle position sensor in the earlier problem, carries power to the subsystem. In this case, through the 23-pin connector to the power splice, then through the power relay and to the power circuit breaker. By following the test steps outlined in the manual for this subsystem, Ray is able to quickly isolate and fix the problem. Each of these procedures is simplified by knowing how to read the Freightliner schematic. The technician can isolate portions of the circuit, tracking down power supply or other connection problems. Troubleshooting becomes more of an exact science and less the art of replacing components. Although the Freightliner schematic tells a technician what components are installed on a Freightliner, it doesn't show their exact location. A quick visual tour of a typical Freightliner truck shows where key items are located. We've already learned that the latest model Freightliners feature a pedal-mounted throttle position sensor. The vehicle speed sensor is located in the transmission rear bearing housing. The vehicle speed buffer is located on top of the transmission housing. The coolant level sensor is mounted in the top tank of the radiator. The clutch switch is found on the clutch pedal. The cruise set resume and on off switches are located on the left hand dash next to the ignition switch. The service brake and park brake switches are on the air junction block under the driver's dash panel. The power and crank relays and the ignition and power circuit breakers are all located in an easily accessed electrical panel under the dash. Troubleshooting is also made easier when a technician is familiar with the vehicle's warning lights. Lights on the vigil light bar include check engine, engine shutdown, coolant temperature, and oil pressure. As mentioned earlier, the mechanic in our story has been working on a Caterpillar 3406C electronic engine. Troubleshooting procedures for the 3176 engine are very similar. Well, you've learned some important details about troubleshooting the OEM side of any Freightliner truck built with one of Caterpillar's newest electronic engines. The place to start is with the diagnostic process, outlined in the front of every Caterpillar troubleshooting manual. When the subsystem where the problem exists has been identified, use the Freightliner schematic to identify the circuits. That's because Freightliner's wiring diagrams provide 
detailed information about the vehicle's numbered wiring system, details the routing of each wire in every circuit, and helps you locate subsystem components on the vehicle. This information helps you isolate and solve the problem quickly, getting your customer back on the road as soon as possible. So, what do you think? Hey, works for me. Okay, your hour is up. Oh, hi. I think I got you all squared away. Hey, great. So, uh, tell me, uh, what's there to do in boring Oregon? I thought you were in a big hurry to get back to Seattle. Seattle can wait. Hey, why don't you let me take you out and buy you a cup of coffee and you can tell me how you fix my truck so quick. Stick with the schematic, follow the manual, gets them every time.